Hey everybody, me and Joe from Boss USA. Welcome to Shop Time Live. Thanks for coming in. I got Chuck Hamilton and I've got Ronnie Coleman is back with us today. He's finally not doing school and work and he's able to join us. Uh, this is actually the 10th episode, believe it or not, of the Balsa Double USA digits. Once They Scale Newport 17 Build Along. So don't forget, head over to BalsaUSA.com, enter coupon code N17BUILD, all caps, no spaces, for your opportunity to get a 10% discount on the kit. Uh, also, let me see, while we're on that subject, I wanted to bring up that we are, and I'm looking just because it may have changed since we were... We were backstage for a few minutes. It may have changed. We are 50 people away from being able to pull the trigger on the quarter scale kit giveaway. So make sure you get over to the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like. Hit that bell button and get yourself on there. Just like it and share it. We've got 50 people. And then we're going to give away a quarter scale kit of the winner's choice. So don't forget to do that. Nice. Very good. Very so, good. hey, everybody. I've got Dale already in here. I got Dan. I, just to make sure that is you, Dale, correct? I call you Dale every week. I'm pretty sure that's who that is. We got Bob. We got Dan, Mike, Barbie, Gene, Randy, David. Hi, everybody. How we doing? Fantastic. All right. So, again, we've got uh, this week's episode is going to be covering uh, – Upper wing construction. We're going to start off in the book at step one on page 27. Before we get going, I do want to make a quick announcement. We are going to forego the Saturday episode for this week. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I'm going to be 100% perfectly straightforward and upfront and honest with you. Me and Joe's going flying. So the weather is going to be absolutely beautiful. The weather is going to be beautiful out here in the Midwest, and I'm going to take advantage. The second thing thank is, you, is, thank you, thank you. <laughs> the second thing <laughs> is, is there's some personal things going on as well. And then what we're thinking is, we were kind of already thinking it anyways, but we figured since the weather was cooperating, we'd pull the trigger. This will give you guys a chance to get both sides of your wing done because we're going to build up to almost to the point where you do the wing tip construction. And then you guys will have a chance to get caught up with us so that when we come back on Tuesday, you'll have your wings ready to go and we'll be able to continue on. So, yeah, we're going to so take yeah, advantage of that, advantage Dale. Of that, Dale. I, I, we're just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. We, we got to do it. We, we need sunshine, we need the fresh air, and we need, we need to get the, stick, the thumbs going again. I've got five airplanes sitting here, all that need to be flown. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. Be mad at me, Joe, if you want to, but we're not doing it Saturday. <laughs> yeah, we got to go flying. Yeah. Okay. So let's get started with the uh, next episode here. We're going to start again. We're going to start on page 27 on step one, which is the upper wing construction. So, uh, all right, guys. Remember, um, after last episode, we built the rudder. It's sanded, it's rounded, um, it's looking good. Um, we cleaned the bench. Remember, we, we re leveled everything out. Um, and now a good spot to start. We're gonna build one half tonight. We're gonna get up to about the wingtip construction, but we'll have all the wing ribs in, spars in, all that fun stuff. And then uh, we'll come back and that'll give you a chance to get caught up because the next step, we're gonna finish the wing. We'll build the airline, uh, we'll finish the wingtip, and then we'll join the wings together. So uh, why we're off camera on that Saturday, we're actually gonna build the other half of the wing um, and get everything ready so that we can jump ahead a little bit further because it is a redundancy. Just make sure you guys build a right and a left wing panel, okay? Uh, <laughs> don't ask me how I know. We've all done it. But uh, so let's let's begin. Remember, guys, we talked early in the episode. I took all my wing parts and I put them in baggies, all right? This is my lower wing and this is one half of my upper wing. So I have them all there ready to go. I'm going to take the lower wing one because the parts are different and I'm going to put it back there. Also, let me get these out. I'm going to make a couple of alterations in the kit. Um, as reading ahead and kind of ease up or make it make things a little bit easier on the constructions. And the first thing is, and on step one, it talks about um, laying down your first leading edge spars. There, there are four spars on this aircraft. Okay, there's two leading edge ones or two forward ones two aft ones, all right? The aft, uh, the, each spar set can consist of dual spars that will fit in between the ribs, 
all right? And then that's shear webbed. But on the very bottom spar, um, moving on, on the forward side, if you if we move a little bit forward into construction, it talks about not putting a notch in it for the um, uh, the wing tips. Okay. Well, they want you to do that while it's all pinned to the board and everything like that. So at that point, you know what? It's just as easy to do it now. So at the very end, when you when you lay your spar down, all right, and you cut to length, okay, the last inch cut a sixteenth of an inch notch out. You can either cut it in. Or like I did, I made a little sanding tool. I put a mark on there and I sanded it down to an to a just to a sixteenth of an inch. What did I use as a gauge? The ribs are sixteenth of an inch. So I kind of used that. I kind of laid it in there. This doesn't have to be super perfect. It just needs to be notched recessed in. So I got that notched in. I'm gonna lay it on the plans, put my straight edge against it to uh, make sure it's nice and straight. Just to clarify, Trek, that, that was the lower spar. Yep, the lower spar. Lower uh, the, spar. For, the, the lower forward spar. There's four spars on this wing. All right, how are we looking there? Good. Got my straight edge in. All right, get this one started, pinned in. All right. Straight edge in place. And I'm gonna lay my pins in, guys, here where there is no rib. Remember that? So that no rib is kind of blocking anything or when you go in there and you glue it in. So I'll probably put maybe a half a dozen pins in here. All right. My board's still nice and level. I, I checked that uh, when I cleaned everything up, and we're in good shape. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, because I did not pre-notch my board on this one, because I did it kind of specifically, because I wanted to show you guys this little trick I have. So if you go to the dollar store, or if you go to a... Um, yard sale, a lot of times you can find these really little thin cutting boards, okay? This one is not even a 16th. It's basically just a piece of hard plastic. And then what I can do, and I'm going to show you this. Let me bring this up here. It's just kind of a quick little thing. It's an easy... Oh, that's not working, is it? Oh, black screen. All right, there it goes. Try this again. Uh, still not. Okay. Anyway, I got a way I can show it. So I'm going to put this down like this. What you can do, this obviously isn't going to be the right spot. But what I found with these is these, these little thin boards. So like if I'm going to cut that piece, if I'm going to notch it, and I want to have a good place to notch it against... I can take this cutting board, this really thin cutting board, and physically slide it under the piece that I'm going to cut. I don't know if you can see that, but it's directly underneath oh, yeah. the piece that I would need to cut. And then I can go in with the cutting board and cut it and notch it and not ruin my plans. And it'd be a little bit easier because you've got kind of a hard surface. And again, I think I paid 10 cents for this cutting board. Just a little quick thing. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. So on to the next step. Um, we have, uh, we, we placed our rear spar in place. All right. Um, cut the length. However, it's not, I don't have it pinned yet. Here's why. Um, take W1 ribs. All right. And lay one very near the end on one side. Put, we're going to put one in the middle. We're going to notch it down in. Nothing's glued. I'm not gluing anything. And one at the aft. And what that is, that is setting that rear spar in place. Now, if I look down at my plans, I'm probably about a sixteenth of an inch off. I'm not sweating that, all right? Because the plans, like we talked about earlier in episode one, plans can grow, move, and things like that. So I'm, I know all my ribs are the same distance spacing because they're all cut from the same die. So I'm trusting my ribs and my cut parts more than I'm trusting my plans. What I'm going to use my plans for is positioning of those ribs, but that depth 
I'm trusting to my wing ribs. All right. So just, just a little verification there. I've got a couple set in place. I liked it. Now I'm going to, I'm going to pin that uh, in place. And we're good to go. And I'll do obviously everything we're going to do here. We're going to repeat on the second wing. So everything matches. Also, um, going forward in the kit, uh, as reading through here, there's a, um, when we get into the false rib section up front, when we'll talk, we'll get, we'll talk about that a little bit later. There's two shorter ribs and the ribs are short or false ribs and they're shorter because there's sheeting that goes on top of them. Do not install those yet. When we get into the false rib section, just kind of put those off to the side. We're going to use those later down the road in a, in a, in a later step. So, all right, I've got my rear, my forward spar down with the notch cut out with the notch facing up. All right, I have my rear spar down, pinned in place, exactly where I want it. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start laying down ribs W1. And if I remember right, there's five of those, and I'm just putting them in position. I'm not gluing anything yet, making sure they're nice, down tight, flush to the spar. All right, there's three. Nice. This thing is fitting together actually very nicely. All right, there's there's some Zeller W1. And should be the last one. Where should be? One, two, three. Oh, oh there it is. Feels leaning on it. All right. Those are in place. They're just kind of in there. There's a nice tight fit. Just gonna cite it over the plans. Everything is looking good. All right. Remember uh, also in episode one, you know, I keep referring back to that. Guys, if you haven't watched that episode yet, I would definitely look at it um, and, and take a look at uh, some of the tips and tricks. I like to use these. This is where this comes in really handy um, because sometimes these commercially bought squares are too big and you, they don't fit in between the ribs. Well, my little hotel key card or gift cards that you get, save those um, once, once they're all used up and cut them in half and I'm using these as triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay that against the spar to see how square we are. Everything's looking pretty good. There, just kind of tapping it. Don't stress about being super perfect. All right, guys, it's Balsa Woods model airplane. Now I'm going to take my thin CA and that's going to wick these into a couple spots. Remember that kind of spot welding we talked about? Same kind of thing. Push that one down a little bit. We're going to come back once the wing is built and we're going to re-glue everything anyway. So this is just all together. Now, um, something I do want to bring up. In your kit, remember we also talked about wood selection. All right. What I had done um, on, the, on the quarter square woods here is I, I pre-sorted it for me. And there is harder wood and then there is softer wood. That's just the way they come. It's the balsa that we're getting nowadays, it's kind of all over the board, and um, but use it to your advantage, all right? So I took my harder sticks for that I was gonna need for the spars. Like, remember like what we did on the fuselage? I took my harder sticks and I used them on the bottom of the wing. Those are the spars for the bottom. Cause that's where most of your G load is gonna be coming from, your positive, your positive Gs, all right? I'll use the softer ones for the top. Unless you're doing some crazy inverted maneuvers, you should, you should, you should be fine. But remember, so pick the harder ones um, for the bottom and keep the softer ones for the top. And that's what I have going on here. So all ribs W1 are in place. They're tack glued, they're squared, they're good. Um, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna put in three and four, which I'll be working towards the root end. And if you notice, number three is kind of like this little half rib or it's, it's a little bit short, I put it that way. And that one's like that. And that one doesn't sit flush on the table. And that's because we are going to, on the center section, we are going to sheet it with, with 116 balsa on each end. So you'll notice a little bit of a gap. So don't freak out that there's a that there's a gap in the wood right there. All right. Number three is tacked in place. And finally, number four. And guys, this one here is the one that I want you to be a little critical on as far as um, just make sure it's nice and perpendicular, okay? Uh, because that's the one where we're going to join the wings together and make it nice and straight and square. 
All right, pretty good there. Whoops, I just knocked it out of place with pins. I've got to be, be square up. Yeah, that's that's the most critical one right there. So that's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Put a little bit of CA on it to keep it in place. Double check one last time. Yeah, happy. All right. So now we've got all the ones, which are five of them. There's one uh, W3, one W4, which is at the root. And there should be four, I believe, W2s, which will finish up the Erlon area. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in place. Kenneth, to answer your question about the four-stroke, that actually a 74-stroke is the equivalent of a 46 two-stroke. So that's pretty close. That's going to be on the higher end of the power curve for this airplane, but it would fit and it would work. So you should be good with that. He was asking if a 74 stroke would be a good engine. As long as he uses that throttle stick, it should yep. be fine. Little throttle control should be good. Yeah. All right. W2s are kind of are keyed in place. I really like using this 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 method so um and also guys when when we when you move on to the second wing and what i'm going to do because remember we talked about plants growing how this one's off a little bit i'm actually going to measure this wing when i'm done at a defined point all right and wherever that defined point is at i'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and that's how i'm going to build the wing too so i know that each wing for example is 26 and a quarter inches wide Okay, because like I said, plans do grow, and that's why we use that straight edge, and that's why we use this key method that, that we're doing here. So just make things a little bit nicer for you, and it won't cause any issues down the road. Now, I have built, when I did my Newport quarter scale 17, I built it to the plans, not thinking that far ahead. And when I tried to square the wing ups to the fuselage, I was off by... Uh, a, almost a quarter of an inch, and I struggled. I couldn't figure out why. Everything fell into place into, up until that point, and all of a sudden, then it didn't. And I, long story short, I had one wing panel that was a quarter inch longer than the other one. So, uh, and that was because of the plan stretch. So let's catch that now. Now, that being said, it affected nothing on the airframe as far as flying, trimming, Nothing. It had no bearing whatsoever. But being a little peculiar and a little on my OCD, it kind of drove me a little, a little zonkers for a while. Okay, bottom spars are in. All my ribs are in. Ronnie, how you doing, buddy? Uh, same as you just said. All my ribs are in right now. I'm going on the quarter by nine sixteenths false spar. Oh, okay. So he's way ahead. Oh, I, I assume that. I mean, yeah, and Ronnie's a man of few words. He's all business. Yeah, I do want to so. say that there's not a lot we can do with Chuck's workbench setup. He doesn't have studio lighting there, so that's just his shop light. Not really much we can do. I think for future Am I builds, getting some glare? Oh, you can't see. Your, your, your table is completely blown out. Is it really? Yeah, but I don't know if there's all anything right. you can do about it. It's been that way all the whole time. I think okay. maybe next time we'll figure out. I'll, I'll send you some tips on how yeah. to light it so it's. All right. So, guys, now I'm insetting the top spar. Remember, that's this is the, the top forward spar. Okay. And remember, guys, this one is the one that's a little bit softer wood. So that. I have that set in place, and this one will sit at the very end. It tips, let me do this here, at ribs three and four. It's The, the spar is going to sit a little little proud or a little high. That's because sheeting is going to actually bump up against it. So forward spar is just set in place. I have my rear spar. Now, the rear spar is a little bit different material, okay? It is a quarter by one eighth, just because it's a little bit thinner um, and there's not a lot of meat left in the ribs at the, at the trailing edge. So I am going to lay that in place.
Notches are good. Everything's laying in. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to tack glue this in. And I'm just using, remember we talked, talked about, guys, I'm just using thin CA. That's all I'm doing. Because I will go back and I will re-glue re every joint on this airplane once it's off the board. Just like everything else we did when we built the fuselage, we built the horizontal, horizontal, we built the vertical. Same. Okay. Trailing edges in place. Looking good. Gonna hit the leading leading edge spar or forward top spar. Good afternoon or evening, Fabio from Colombia. Thanks for joining Hola. us. Hola. All right. That pretty much brings us up to should be about step uh, step five, step four. Step five is now the rear trailing edge. I'm going to take one of my little parts here and move them down. Now we're going to create the rear trailing edge of the wing. And that comes from the 1 16th by 3 quarters inch stock. And what this is, we kind of do a double cap, and I'm going to explain it here. It's just a flat stick sheet, and then we'll cap at the very end on it afterwards. And so it's going to create this very unique, strong, tight trailing edge, and the ribs will butt up against it. So at this point, my ribs have notches in them. So that this can actually slide right into. And let's see how that slides in. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Except that's the wrong one. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to throw a couple pins in just to hold it down while it's sitting there. It'll make my life a little bit easier when I when I see it in. Once again, I'm allowing the notches in the in the in the, in the balsa to control the spots of the part rather than trying to control it with the plans all right so this so is a great example i wanted to make sure i pointed this out and i was waiting on you to say it so right here is an example of exactly what chuck's talking about i get questions all the time about hey my plans are off hey my plans are off your plans aren't off your plans are go are made of wood Okay, they're made of wood pulp. That paper is going to move and shift from heat, humidity, climate change, everything. We always recommend build to the wood, not to the plans. So right there you can see this line on the plans is the line that's drawn for the lower edge of this sheeting or this trailing edge. Okay, you can see it's off. It's off. I'm guessing that's about a... 30 seconds. So don't stress out over that. Build to the wood, not to the plants. People don't Absolutely. understand that. A lot of times we get questions about, hey, why is that not matching up? Well, it's not meant to. <laughs> <laughs> plans are, are a living, growing thing. All right. So, uh, okay. So I've got the trailing edge of the wing in place. Now I'm going to install my 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 trailing edge cap is what i'm going to call it and this one i'm actually going to use just a piece of thick uh some th thick ca and run a bead right down the middle and then i'm going to butt it in place because it kind of notches right against those ribs nice and tightly they're perfect hold it in there for a second and she's in place like i said later on i'll go in once this is off the board i'll hit every single spot um on this with uh i'll re-glue the joints on it okay next part is the cutout on on a newport 17 uh, right above the pilot there's a notch out in the wing for him to access access the um, top forward gun and also for visibility and in the kit there's a couple of uh these half moon shaped parts that, let's call I'm trying to find my other one here and there's two different sizes all right there's a shorter one and a tall and a longer one the longer one is for the top. So I'm going to put that off to the side and I'm going to use a shorter one. 
and I'm going to lay the I'm going to lay that one in place. Now, just like everything else, this is keyed in place. All right, and so it fit. And actually, it fit perfect, right where it needed to go. So I'm going to tack glue that in place. Perfect there. Good there. And as you guys can see, how fast this wing is literally falling together. Now, something that I did do, and in, in, in all fair honesty, I went and pre-cut my spars um, and my trailing edge pieces to pretty much to length before we start building. I did come a little bit long um, because we, we have room to trim and all that stuff. But I did that so the so this process would go a lot quicker for you. And and I'm definitely going to do that, that the next way in the wing because it, it, things are just falling into place. Okay. So... Damon, uh, right now is the perfect opportunity for you to get a Balsy USA biplane. Go over to BalsyUSA.com and enter in coupon code N17, all caps, no spaces, just like you see it there on the screen, and you will receive 10% off of your very own 1.6 scale Newport 17. Okay. And this is where I'm going to change on the plans uh, again. Now, the next step would be to take all your little false ribs, and there's a bunch of them, guys. There's, let me see, two, four, I think there's like 16. And they, those go right in the front, in between. And Joe can probably show you a picture better than you guys can see on my table. Um, so there's 16 of them that go in the front of the wing is what they call the false leading edge. Um, there's That's a good pick. Okay. This is where I'm going to change things up. First, and like we talked about earlier, is I am not gonna go add the, the two short versions, as we say, that is that is basically in between um, rib, uh, wing rib number three and four. Those we're right gonna keep here. out for a while because that's part of the center section. Yep. If you can see those what dotted lines right there, that's where those go. We're not putting those in just yet. But what I'm gonna do, and I, I did this on the other new port, the quarter scale I did. I had my straight, my leaning edge, which is my quarter by three quarters inch. And I'm going to lay it in place on the wing. All right. And then I'm going to pin it in place. Just with a couple of pins. There we go. Okay. Why am I doing this? Well, right now, I know I have some good solid contact points on those ribs. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spots. And I can see from here that I have really good um, contact points. So now I'm going to tack glue my leading edge, which, which is flush to the table. All right. I'm going to tack glue it to those, uh, to those ribs, uh, W1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm doing this because I'm sure in a nice bond on those key ribs. And I'm also ensuring um, that it's true and it's straight. Okay, looks good, looks good. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do it's really easy to do. I'm going to take my fall ribs and I can literally just slide them in place. Slide over the plans. These things fit just like the design to do. All right. And that's going to slide them all into place. I am not going to glue them until I get them all in place. I'm happy with their alignment. And we'll be good to go. There's one bay right there already. And now instead of trying to go in there and put glue on each individual rib, I can just go in there once they're on place, just boom, 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 boom with my glue. And they're all they're all in place. One thing I want to stress, and I didn't I didn't say anything about it, I, I kind of I didn't skip it, I just didn't mention about it that you need to put some balsa 116 shims underneath rib three and four and what that does and all those shims are you don't glue the shims in but you um you just put them in the board and then you set the ribs on top that's the spacer for the sheeting 
all right, that we're going to add in the center section area. So I, I forgot, I apologize, I didn't mention that, but uh, um, not a big deal. Even if you did glue your ribs in by mistake, at this point, remember, they're only tack glued in. Just take your X-Acto knife, pop them loose, and you're golden. At this point, it's not going to affect anything as far as construction of the wing or anything key. It's not going to set you back. So. And you'll find those shims in your handy-dandy scrap box. That's right. Also, um, those two spare false ribs that we're not going to put in yet, those are 1 16th. So you can use those if you want. But I do like the handy dandy scrap box. That thing's really paying big dividends. Greg. Uh, Jerry. All right, buddy. Talk to you later, my friend. Jerry, D. Jerry, managing editor, model airplane news. Right, uh, Jerry's back. Greg, to answer your question, he's actually leaving. Um, we are going to cover wing alignment. So if you wanted to go ahead and take advantage of the deal, you'd be perfectly fine. Plus, I am always available all the time for questions, comments, anything that you need. All you got to do is let me know, and we will help you get through that stuff. Um, and Balsa does something really neat on the wing alignment on their aircraft. And it, a lot of it pertains to how we build it straight and as true as possible and uses some very simple tools on on that process and how we jig it all together and then we kind of build to that jig if you will i remember my father would make would take cardboard boxes and he'd bake all these jigs and he'd slide wing rib or the wings in and he'd have all this contraption which probably took a couple of days just to jig the airplane the way balsa does it is we basically set the airplane on its nose which we know that's nice true and square we mount the bottom wing we kind of set the top wing near in place and we basically take a square to the bottom of the wing you know what that measurement is that's typically square to the bottom of the fuse on the top of the wing we set the incidence by adding i think on, it depends on each airplane Every airplane's a little bit different but it's like we put a 3 16 so a quarter inch shim at the trailing edge we line it there and then we build everything to mount those wings that's kind of the overall thing in a, in a, in a shell so um but I've got already already have half of the false ribs in place. This is kind of the tedious part, pretty much on the wing, which will which will take you to, will take you the longest. But it's not a not a real big deal. And I'll I'll finish those when, when we get off camera. Because what I want to do is I want to get to the uh, what's left here on the airline. Because there's a couple parts here that uh, um, are, are really I don't say they're they're not really super clear in the plan. So moving over here to the airline side, what we have to do is we have to cap that rear of that airline area with a half inch by quarter inch stock, all right? And that's basically what you're gonna mount your hinges to and everything like that. Because right now it's like an open structure back there and we want something a little bit more, a little bit more solid. So I've got my quarter inch by half or 9 16th, I'm sorry. And be careful in the instructions because there's a 9 16th and there's a half and I had to search for the box of sticks uh to, to find that one and that's where this really came in handy with, with the notch out guides guys so that's uh really good so that's in place and i'm gonna add this is where i'm gonna use some thick ca just on the bottom because i can't get to it really good once we get this in place so that's i'm gonna add it to the end as well just a little bit and you guys know i'm not a big user on the, on the glue okay that's in place that's already kicked in let's put a pin in it for uh just security reasons let's say all right flush the table the next step is there's a beveled there's one stick in that in uh um in the box that's beveled and it's a half uh i think it's a 36 inch um stick uh it's a half but it also has a bevel in it now if you can really see that on the on the instru or on the thing or but there's a nice bevel on it and what that does that is a pre-shaped leading edge um material and we want to do on the bevel side we want to face down to where it's flat on a board and the way to tell it's face down or how it's flat is you just look at it from the end before i pin that in place i'm going to take one of my scrap pieces of wood and i'm going to put a gap in between the airline there you go perfect perfect picture joe um 
between my airline and my wing at the root of the airline, okay? And what that, what that basically can do is can allow me enough clearance so that my, air, my airline moves freely. I'm gonna pin that airline stock down in place because I like that angle, the angle sitting flat on the table. And then now all I have to do is add my airline ribs, okay? Just be careful not to glue that stock or that shim piece, if you, as you will, into the, uh, the the wing rib. And that's in place like that. Let me go ahead and perfect. Use my tip of my exacto knife here to get that uh, nice and tight in there. So that's why I got a little booger on there. I gotta get rid of. So here by the end of this evening, we're going to have the major construction of the wing. The only thing that will be done left to tidy this thing up at all will be some hard mounts and things like that. But that actually comes later in the manual when we when we get to rigging this thing. Because remember, we'll jig this thing all up and we'll rig everything to those jigs. So, all right. Glenn, yeah, to answer fine. your question, we basically threw a dart at the wall, and that's the kit we hit. Um, I will say that most of the kits, we talked about this in a couple of the earlier episodes, like the Newport 17. If you can build the one six scale Newport 17, you can build a quarter scale Newport 17, you can build a third scale Newport 17. Um, there's a little bit difference with the way the wings and stuff are rigged and the rigging is set up in the third scale, but pretty much it's the same kit. So really all these tips and all these tricks that we were telling you guys about are usable on all of our kits. So really there, it was really just a matter of that's the kit we picked. There was no lime or reason to it. We just picked one and went with it. I'm digging through my parts here. Just I'm just digging through and finding my uh, my rib spots here. My Ronnie's, ribs. Ronnie's already setting his wing in incidents. Probably <laughs> is. No, nah, just just doing the ER. Ronnie, are you all done with school? Uh, I have one more final project to do, and then I will be all done. Great. And that will complete your freshman year of college, correct? Yep. Fantastic. Congratulations. Hmm. All right. For some reason, I cannot find my other wing ribs. Or my airline ribs. I might have to cut some. I know I had them. Oh, wait a minute. Did I put them in the bottom of the wing bag? I did. There they are. Okay. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to dig those out later because there's a bunch of them in there. So I have all the wing ribs done in my airlines, on my, on my airlines. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start finishing up my leading edge, which I have two, four, six, eight uh, more false ribs to do on my leading edge. And that pretty much completes the wing until we get to the wing tip, which gets a little fiddly bit. But we're going to talk about that uh, on the next on the next episode because I uh, I'm not even working my lighting by then because it does get a little the angles get a little uh, peculiar, but it end up works out really good. And what that does is the way we build that wing tip actually creates the washout in the wing. All right, uh, and if anybody know what washout is, is when we put a slight uh, twist in the wing. So low, low speed handling is increased. And what we do on the new port, we actually build it into the wing tip while the wing is built flat on the table with the exception of the wing tip, we actually raise the end a little bit, thus that notch that we added, okay? And so that creates um, the washout along with the airline um, tip on the end and that's how it creates the washout, makes for a very stable, nice flyer. Uh, answer to your question, Kenneth, is yes. We are already planning a next show. Uh, this is probably going to take a break after we finish this one off and come back in the fall with something different. That is the plan. Just don't know what it is yet. 
Okay. So let me go ahead and finish these false ribs. Remember, guys, we're not putting in the two short ones in a center section. We're leaving those free for now because we're going to use those as an encapsulation part when we mount the wing. So they're exactly perfect where we want them, and they're good. That got us up to steps 10 uh, with the exception of the false ribs, right? Right. Yep. All right. So I we think we have our leading edge on, and our false ribs are in place. We build our wingtip. Our airline's built. Cutout is in place. Um, oh, one thing we can do. Let's talk about that real quick, Joe, because I, I do want to put that in place. Remember that the, on the cutout, okay, on the bottom, we had a shorter one for the bottom. We had a longer one for the top. We can go ahead right now, and we can add the top one. And that, if you look at um, on the plans, that falls in place just like the other one. The only thing you have to do here is make sure you use your square so that the bottom piece and the top piece are lined up together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've got that set in place. I'm using my square to make sure that it's it's lined up on top of each other. That's good. I'm going to tack glue in place. And that's done. And I think that covers, I'll add the false ribs, find my last two trailing edge ribs, and we're golden. Yep, just like that. All right, so I think that brings us up to the end of this episode. We're running a little bit short, that's okay. Keep in mind, step over to BalsaUSA.com and enter in coupon code N17, all caps, no spaces, uh, for your chance to get 10% off the 1-6 scale Balls USA Newport 17 kit so you can join in. Uh, we've had several people join in. Please make sure you share your pictures with me. You can send them to the team at BallsUSA.com. You can send them to tech at BallsUSA.com. You can text them to me and Joe at 517-208-2112. You can all that. I'm happy to share your pictures. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Uh, I'd like to see how things are going, and it'll be perfect. So one of the things I do want to make sure that I talk about before we leave, and I'm going to close that window so I can see what I'm doing. And just so you know, we're getting ready to open up a poll on the Facebook page, and we're going to poll for the color schemes on the BIS version. So we're going to do an online poll, and we're going to let the readers and watchers choose the scheme. We've got five, uh, four schemes to choose from there. We've got that one, this one here, that one, and that one. So stay tuned for that. There'll be a poll on the Facebook page. Make sure you step over to the Facebook page and give your vote so we can choose a color scheme. Uh, also, make sure, and I'm going to go over here and check it real quick and hit refresh. We are at 50 to go for 3,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Make sure you like and share the screen so we can give away that quarter scale kit of the winner's choice. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Don't forget to swing over by policyusa.com and get your coupon code in 17 build so that you can join with us. And that's really just about it for this evening. I want to thank everybody for showing. I like to thank all of our viewers, live viewers. I like all of the folks coming in. I like you guys being active, asking questions. That's what we're looking for. If you have any questions about anything else, just let us know. Uh, that's what we're here for. So as I'll always, jump in afterwards, and uh, I jump back in in the Facebook post afterwards. And if there's any questions out there, I try to answer them for you guys specifically. If you have anything, so give me a little bit. But I usually about an hour afterwards, I jump back in, I scour and um, and see what the comments are, and if I can help anybody. So if, even afterwards, if you think of something after we're done here, put it on there, and uh, we'll make sure we get you taken care, of, taken care of. And even after that, I am on there all the time. So when you make a comment or make a post, it dings my phone. So we'll get you an answer relatively quickly. So That's right. Uh, all righty. I want to thank Chuck. I want to thank Ronnie for being here. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your help on this one. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And happy building. Thank you.